Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to do an oil pastel project. I'm gonna be using the new 48 color set from Paul Rubens. This is the Hiaya or Haya oil pastel set. Um, they are new. I believe they'll be coming out with larger sets, but this is a set of 48 that's available now on Amazon. This is what it looks like. Uh, this is how it swatches out. I plan on having a review on these. I did start to film one and I did the swatching. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that footage or not, but anyway, uh, or maybe we'll just get to all of it here and we won't need to do a review. We'll see. We'll get a pretty good feeling on how these work while we're doing our um, painting today. You can follow along with whatever oil pastels you have. Um, I've got a piece of anthracite uh, pastel mat, which is kind of a gray, subtly textured uh, paper taped down to a piece of chloroplast here just for a rigid surface and I like to make a border with tape so I'll have an area to handle the painting after I'm done. I've got some silicone tipped tools. I found them. <laughs> they were with my palette knives for those of you following the where are my tools saga and I just find them easier to blend small details when I don't want to get my fingers like if my fingers are too big to get in there and I've got a reference photo which I will link down below. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, you'll see the pastels as I grab them but I don't think I'll need to um, have all the, the box and frame. And I'm gonna start with a, actually I'm gonna start with a very light kind of pastel yellow. And I'm gonna look at this, see if there's names, uh, Naples yellow. So there are names, they're very small. I probably won't re be referring to exact names just because it'll be kind of hard to, um, to read them. Uh, I'm gonna try to just kind of sketch without too many, um, uh, uh, too many like uh, preparatory lines because pastel mat can be difficult to um, to clean or to erase on so I'm gonna just try to keep it fairly uh, fairly accurate. I probably should have put that down a little bit lower. I'm got a big um, rose here. These are very soft. I probably should start by sketching on with a colored pencil so Feel free to sketch on with a colored pencil or chalk if you want to. I'm just jumping right in. These feel really great. They remind me a lot of the, they remind me a lot in shape and in um, in softness of the, of the um, Sennelier oil pastels. I was very excited. They look kind of like the, the Sennelier oil pastels. I was very excited to, to see these offered. I'm gonna bring that one up a little higher. Uh, and I'll be looking forward to the larger sets if they decide to come out with them in the American market. I think a lot of times with like Paul Rubens, they're offered in the Asian markets first because they're out of China. They probably see how popular things are maybe and then offer them or the distributors will pick them up because there's the larger sets are in the, the brochure that comes with the pastel. In fact, I think I'll probably be able to get all the information about the review in this video. So if you are interested, then... Um, then watch and listen and I don't know I could always do a review where I make it a little more concise but I think it's always nice to kind of see how things apply uh, I feel like you get a much better idea of how a product will work if you actually watch a demo of it I know it takes time but spend a little time rather than spend a lot of money on something that you know might not work for you these are pretty affordable I'm thinking that the set of 48 was around $27 and if you compare that to like Sennelier, I bought a set of 24 as on from Sennelier and I think I paid about $50 for a set of 24 and that was a pretty good sale that when I bought it and I think they're more than that now. Um, so just for a little bit of reference. Okay, so I got the basic sketch blocked in and now I want to put a little color in the background and so I'm going to see what we have for colors here. Uh, on the reference photo there are some like grays and purples and I think that's very, very appealing. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put that in. This pastel mat is not sanded, but it does have a texture to it, and it does behave similar to a sanded paper. Um, an affordable paper, I actually I was going to use it, but I wanted something with a little bit darker of a background. Uh, I was going to use my Canson XL sand grain paper. That is such a wonderful, at least I find it to be a wonderful paper for... Um, for pastel, for oil pastels especially. And it's pretty decent for soft pastels, but it really thrives, it really shines with oil pastels. Now you can see how soft this is and how much it's getting worn down. I just want to make you aware of that because uh, I do think that they're good, they're going to wear down pretty quickly. But sort of the sennelier, so it's kind of like if you're getting a really soft oil pastel, you kind of have to 
expect that a little bit. And I don't want to go overboard because um, I don't want to waste it, but I do feel like this is going to blend out pretty easily and I might need to go in and put more. And often, if I was doing this and I wasn't planning on doing a review or I wasn't using this kind of as a review for these pastels, I would be using them with my other pastels. I would be adding, um, like, hard, I would be starting off with harder pastels and getting the background done with the harder pastels, my first layers with the harder pastels, and then I would save these softer ones for the final layers because um, you can layer soft over hard really easily with pastels and it conserves the softer ones that tend to be a little bit more expensive as well. And then it also allows you to build up a lot of color and uh, work really um, efficiently, in my opinion. So I'm um, one of the another reason I really want to get this video out is because I'm very excited to just integrate these into my pastel cabinet with all my other soft pastels because I like to just pull out the trays, lay them over my table, and um, and use them all together. I'm adding this white ink because I know I'm going to need some lighter spots. This is kind of nice. I'm finding that it's not the white is not picking up a ton of the background color, which is really good. I could scribble it on my um, my taped clean it or wipe it with a rag if I need to. Let me see. I kind of wish I, oh yeah, I want to get a little bit of gray in there. They do have this pretty gray here. A nice cool, light cool gray. I think I'll use this kind of like as a blender almost. The photo is from Unsplash. It's taken by Kathy Holwinski. I will try to remember to link it down below. Sometimes I forget. I'm not perfect. Newsflash, buddy. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I think we all know that, don't we? So when I blend this, I'm gonna to want to get, I wanna overlap slightly because I don't wanna have like a halo. I'm gonna use my fingers. If you don't wanna use your fingers, oh, I don't know if I have enough in here to use my fingers. You know what, I don't, I'm gonna try because it might actually be kind of cool to have it, have some of that, have more of that gray showing through. I mean, that's the reason I did it on the gray, but I might need to go in and add more. I kind of like this mild effect though, so maybe I won't. You could use like one of those um, finger cots that you can get, like uh, they're made of silicone. I've seen them at the Dollar Tree. I think they're meant for like using with like if you're doing hot glue and stuff so you don't burn your fingertips. Those would work really well if this kind of grosses you out. Um, on the pastel mat, it's not that abrasive, but if you're doing this on a, sa a true sanded paper, this amount of friction could, um, you know, could aggravate your fingers. It could irritate your skin. So just kind of, just kind of know that. Th this uh, pastel mat and also the Canson sand grain paper doesn't seem to bother my, um, my fingers to blend like this. But it is, you do need a lot more media, I think, because you know, it takes a lot more to fill the tooth on this paper. So I don't want to put too much though and end up in a big greasy mess. Larger backgrounds where I tend to use the cheaper, the cheaper pastels. I'm gonna go in with, um, I think I'm gonna do the gray. I don't lighten it up too much because the flowers are light. I want the flowers to be lighter in value. This will just mute things down a little bit. I might even go in there with a darker color too. You're not get, gonna get mud as much on this paper because your colors, if you're just using a thin layer like this, you're not going to get so much color that it, um, that it's going to bother you. I'm going to use this kind of like Prussian blue color as well. Cause I think that was kind of the paper color that I think would have worked really well, but I didn't, I didn't have it. So I also like Cansom Mitant paper. Uh, I think it's actually cost more than the, than the sand grain XL. But that's a that's a really pretty affordable one, pretty versatile paper. I like it because I can use um, the rough side for pastels, and I can use the smoother side for colored pencils. It's just um, it's a nice uh, there's a lot of good variety of colors available too. You can get it in pads or buy in full sheets and cut it down. Uh, I usually get mine at Blick, and I'll just um, I tend to get like an assortment of larger sheets and cut them down, but it. It is kind of convenient to get the smaller smaller sheets. You can get a pack of like, I think 25 of single color too, if you find that you're always using like avocado green or beige or whatever it is. 
you can get just the color, you know, you can get a single pack of just the colors that you use a lot of, of the smaller size and the bigger size too. I think Ivy was one of my favorites. I used to use a lot when I had my studio downtown, but now I honestly don't like dealing with the big sheets quite so much, so I will tend to go with smaller sheets or smaller pads, just because if it's just for me, it's a little more convenient. When I'm buying for a class, I, you know, I try to, I'll go with the bigger, the bigger sizes and cut them down for economy's sake, because I know I'm going to get through it all. All right. Um, I think, I think that works. It's, it's kind of messy, but... I don't like seeing so much of the green. I think I want to get a little bit more of that. Is this the color I used? I think this was the color I used. I think so, because I haven't used these that much and there's a big flat spot on, on this, so I think it is. Are you bored yet? <laughs> Are you bored yet with this video? Keeping it real time, just so you can have a good idea about how long it's gonna take. I want these, even though I've got some red in there, it's it's a cool red. I want the background a little more cool. Oh, there we go. I like that effect. Uh, I want the background a little bit more cool because I want the flowers uh, to have a little more warmth to them, have more peaches and, and the yellows and pinks, so I get a little bit more advancement. And then the background will just kind of blur away a little bit more. You can feel when you don't have enough pastel because you're, you just feel squeaky, kind of. And you can leave some of the strokes just unblended. If you like that look, go for it. I like this navy. I feel, I think it looks a little bit better to have something rather than just the blank paper if you're putting this much background stuff in, personally. The nice thing about pastel is you can keep layering and you don't have to, um, it doesn't disturb the layers underneath as easily. You can, you can get more layers on without having a problem. So, so it's nice for that. I didn't take too much time in my initial drawing because I knew a lot of it was going to get kind of smudged out. All right. I'm going to start with, um, and my hand, my fingers aren't even too bad because most of the pastel is on the is on the paper. I'm gonna start with. Uh, I think I might go petal by petal. I gotta pick up my colors here. I like this this uh, peachy salmon color. I like this um, corally lipstick red. Let's see, what do they call this color? Because this is really pretty. Coral. It's called coral. Um, and I want some yellow. I'm gonna use some of the Naples yellow we sketched with. Um, Oh, I also like this yellow, and I need a warmer, probably more of an intense yellow like this. Okay, so I mean, I can grab more if I want to, but I'm going to start off with these guys. And I think I'll start off with, uh, let's see, I think we're going to have a little petal back here that's completely covered up right now by the, uh, by the background, but that's all right. I'm just going to... Just kind of draw the outline of it. And color it in, get a feel for that. Get a feel for the opacity. Okay. And I think we'll put a few, maybe a few little Petals back here in the background a little bit. And flush out the flower. And then I can spend some time on the, the uh, closer petals. And this is where I would go in with my uh, silicone tools and I would just blend a little bit as, as I felt it needed. And this can help you sharpen up any edges so that those main petals uh, won't, there won't be a gap between the main petals in the background. 
can just wipe these off on the paper towel when you're done. All right, I think those are those are fine. I think that's gonna fill in that background space. Okay, I'm also gonna need some white. All right, I'm gonna start with this panel here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white to the top edge. I'm gonna add a little bit of Naples yellow down here in the center. I'm gonna put in some coral and some of this lighter salmon color. And then I'm gonna use this round, soft round tip here to blend. Yeah. I'll do my, use my fingers for the center because it just blends better and then I'll just use the silicone tip for the edges. Alright, on this one I want some yellow here towards the bottom. This yellow is not as opaque as the Naples yellow because it doesn't contain as much white and you can really see that. So I'm going to overlap those two colors. A little bit of coral in the center here. And then I'll go over to the more salmon color as we get towards the edge. And some white. Oh, they're like, they're like painting with lipstick. They're very soft. Blend into that yellow a little bit. Something I'll keep handy for my fingers when I need to clean them when I'm painting is I'll just use a um, like a spray bottle with rubbing alcohol and that works really well for um, it works really well for breaking down any of that oil. Somebody asked if they're water soluble. I do not believe so, but let me just yep, yeah, definitely not water soluble. So I just wanted to test that out because somebody did. Ask me that when I mentioned that I had gotten them to review. Okay, I'm going to wipe my fingers. Baby wipes have a little bit of a soap or an oil in them, like a conditioner, like a lotion. So they will also take the, take the stuff off your fingers. Uh, did I add any of that in yet? I can't remember. I do want to start integrating this yellow because it's so pretty. And yeah, go back and add more color if you're not happy with it. Just keep on going until you are. And you can always go in with a colored pencil at the end for like really refining edges. So don't feel like you have to have it perfect in this stage. If you enjoy this video here on YouTube and you like these longer um, more in-depth videos that you might like Critique Club. Critique Club is a monthly membership group I have. There's over a hundred um, long, more advanced, real-time mixed media tutorials in it. Um, you can upload your work to share with me and, and for feedback. And uh, we have a wonderful group there. It's $5 a month. You can cancel any time. If you think you would like that, if you enjoy these kind of more in-depth offerings, um, I would recommend you check it out. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It just kind of gives you, like, if you just need a little bit of extra help, you're like, oh, I wish I could show Lindsay my paintings and get her feedback on them. Um, that's a great place to do that and also enjoy all the additional, um, all the additional training, all the additional art lessons that you get in there. And I also have the archives. I have a Critique Club archive. So if you don't really want to be a member of a of a group, you don't want to subscribe to something, you just would like to buy the classes and be done. I do have uh, archives for every year of Critique Club as well as a bundle if you want to get them all and save some money. We've got 
that all over at my Teachable school. I'll try to remember to link it up, but if I don't, you just go to lindsaywyrick.teachable.com and you can find all the information if it's something you would be interested in. And if not, you know, search my YouTube channel, find some uh, find some other long tutorials. I've got a lot. I've been doing this 13 years, so I have a lot of tutorials out there. There's a lot of yellow we can see on the undersides of these petals. So I want to really get that in there. I think it also looks really nice against the purple background because those are opposite colors. And I have one coming in back there. I wonder if I can lift off some of that pastel though. Um, I have another, I should have another petal back here, but I didn't leave space for it. So I'm gonna see if I can lift some of it off so I don't have to fight the purple using a kneaded eraser so I don't uh, have to wipe any eraser chunks off. Just kind of press it in there. There. I love that Naples yellow. I don't know if these are available open stock anywhere. Sometimes AliExpress will offer open stock with different Paul Rubens products. Um, I'm not sure about the pastels though. But if you do like these, you can get Snellier open stock and it's a very similar, a very similar feeling. To see if there's pigment information on the pastels. I believe it's on the Amazon listing. You could print out. Oh, it's there. Uh, well, some P Y well, C P W six, but there should be another. There should be a red pigment in there too. Oh my gosh, I cannot read it. It's small. Let me see if there's um. I look at this one. P Y thirty five. Oh, that's cadmium yellow. PY35 is cadmium yellow. So there is pigment information, light fast information, and opacity information. Um, but it's tiny. But I do like that they have it right on the right on the wrapper, PW6, that's no surprise. This one PW6 and natural red, maybe? I, I don't know, I can't see what the other part is. So I guess it's kind of hit or miss, but I like the effort. Please put your pigment information on stuff. I always love that. So that's a cadmium yellow. Maybe we shouldn't be blending them with our raw fingers. Uh, just wash your hands well, make sure you don't cut out the cuts on your hands. And honestly, is there a cautionary label on this? Because if there's cadmium, there really should be. I'm trying to, I'm gonna flip this over. So since this is kind of like a little bit of a review too, I do not see a cautionary label. Uh, and I don't see the pigment information on the back, but it does have names, numbers, and light fastness rating. Um, there's no there's no cautionary label on here. Cadmium can be dangerous if you breathe it. I don't think you want it getting into your skin, but maybe in this form it's not, it's protected. I don't know, but I did want to mention that because it does say no, do not give to children zero to three years old, but if it had cadmium in it, I wouldn't give it to kids any age because... Um, even though the risk is probably pretty low, it is a known carcinogen and kids put things in their mouths and, you know, pets eat stuff and, you know, your kid might not be good about keeping stuff out of the, you know, picked up and a pet comes along and eats it. I would feel bad if that happened. So I'm going to say I'm surprised there's no cautionary label. If that, if that pigment information, PY35, is correct, unless I just had like some sort of brain aneurysm and I'm thinking of the wrong chemical compound for cadmium yellow, but I'm pretty sure that's cadmium yellow. Which I have no problem with cadmiums in my, um, in my supplies. I love cadmium pigments. I think cadmium pigments are really, are really nice. They're opaque, they're light fast. I like them, but I also people should know and I think if you're selling that on Amazon shipping it to California especially I'm not I'm not in California but if you can buy these in California they're really strict about disclosing what's in products especially if it contains cadmium and also in uh, I believe in in uh, Europe they are as well 
So that's interesting. I haven't gone through and looked at all the pigment information. I'm mostly just kind of looking at the uh, performance here. Which they're performing really well. Usually don't see cadmium in like uh, dusty pastels because they can go airborne so easily, but the oil pastels, not so much. But it probably should be wearing gloves to be safe, but I'm going to wash my hands when we're done really well before I eat anything. I think that's where the big thing, like if you're going to, um, if you're going to eat something and you got that stuff on your hands, which is another reason I don't think kids should really have this this product either, unless you know they're going to be using it away from food and they're going to clean their hands well before they eat. And if you smoke, then definitely wash your hands before you smoke. I have a cup of tea on my table. That's about the only um, the only food I'll, ever, I'll have in my studio would be a, a pack of gum or a cup of tea or maybe a glass of water from live streaming. I'm not one to really eat while I work. I'm gonna leave that one done at this at this level. It's gonna need a little bit of uh, a little bit of judging with a color pencil and some detail and stuff. But I'm gonna I want to get everything up to kind of this level and then I'll go in and add some more details. And move over to this blossom now. This blossom has a lot of really pretty reds on it, and again, a lot of this is just kind of blocking and blending. Just having a good time, we're relaxing, right? We're enjoying ourselves. These are fun. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm liking. I love oil pastels anyway. I, I think, I just really love to draw, and I don't draw as often as as I should. I'll draw like before I do a painting or whatnot, but I just love the drawing aspect. I was just doing some graphite work for a client the other day, and I'm just like, oh, I love drawing. Why don't I draw more? You know, it's so satisfying. Or like I'll be like when I'd be chaperoning one of the kids trips or something and we would have to be doing some drawing for a class or whatnot. It was just like, oh, why did I do this more? You know, this is so fun. You can get stuff down so quickly. It was like a field. We're doing like a field journal stuff. It was so nice. I loved it. Okay. I'm gonna blend our questionably carcinogenic pastels here. Mm, the blending is just really lovely. That's definitely going to need some enhancements with my uh, my pencils, but I think that's all right. I'm going to go to some greens. Green is where I will find um, colored pen. Uh, goodness, soft pastels having issues sometimes. And I don't know what it is about green, but, um, and it's across a lot of brands, especially greens that are more vibrant. Greens like this that are a little bit more earthier or that have obviously have white added, I don't have such an issue. But for whatever reason, when I have a green that's like a, um, uh, that's like a, a Viridian or Thalo green, those tend to just kind of get a little streaky and kind of gummy and sticky. And Sennelier's, uh, Sennelier's greens are not quite as as bad in that color. So that'd be one of those things where I'd be like, yeah, definitely if you need like a phthalo green, you need something that's really vibrant, I would say splurge and buy it from Sennelier because they're gonna give you the best, um, the best green. But often you can just kind of like fool around with whatever set you have and find a couple colors that you can mix together to, to add to that green or to get that green working. I mean, it's, you could, you know, do your classic yellow and blue, um, but sometimes that gets muddy and that's because a lot of the greens, some of the greens are, are single pigments, like your Verde and your Thalo, they're, they're single pigment green, so they just tend to be a little bit more fresh and a little bit more vibrant than mixing. And then when you mix pastels, you can often get into the situation where it's just, uh, it just gets muddy because you're mixing. And a single pigment is usually going to give you a more vibrant color, as long as it's a, it's a vibrant color to begin with, to begin with obviously. But 
I'm going to get the hip of this flower in here. And we've got a the base of that. I'm going to be going into more of our of our uh, gray greens in a minute. We can base the um, leaves in here with this bright green. Is this a Viridian? This is PG36 and PY3 and PW, does that have some PW4 on there? That might be keeping it from getting too streaky. But also on this paper, you're going to have different results, the different papers that you use. A better paper is going to give you a better result. So if you're having streakiness on in like a sketchbook, you may not on like a sanded paper. There's there's so many variables with everything in art. You know, you might try some watercolors and be like, I hate these paints, they're garbage. But you try them on another paper, then you're like, oh, actually, I kind of like the, these paints on this paper. And I've had, like, paints that I have not been crazy about, but then I mix them with this other brand, and, oh, all of a sudden, they're, they're awesome. I love them. The, um, like, Cotman watercolors, when I use them with my Derwent pastel watercolors, they're like a whole other paint. They just are, they work so well together, and um, and I really like them. On their own, they're okay, uh, but when I mix them, they just—it's like they take on a whole new life, and uh, they have a whole new—they have a whole lease of life. It's like a—it's a whole new product when I, when I mix those two together. And I think they make each other better. You know, it's one of those things where it's not like the Derwent is dragging up the Cotman; they're making each other better, and that's uh, that's kind of those combinations you want to find with your materials. And the only way you're going to find that is by playing with your materials and using them. Uh, and that's you come you you'll develop those you'll discover those little nuggets and um, obviously you can learn some of that from watching videos but everybody has different preferences and everyone has different materials to combine so the way you're going to learn how your materials act with each other is by using them so you don't feel like you need permission you need to wait to have somebody show you how to use them just use them and see what you get this color has a, is this kind of like a sagey green. It has so much white in it. And the colors with the white tend to be creamier. This is, I'm, I'm liking this. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like the saw, the sagey green. It's really nice for those, uh, those uh, hips that have kind of started to go by. I'm liking these pastels quite a bit, actually. Quite nice. And you got some... That color in there, just kind of the seeds starting to go by. I don't need to put too much in there yet. I just want to kind of indicate it. Um, I might go back to that blue we used in the background. It's kind of like a, it was kind of like a Prussian blue. I'm going to add that in some of the shadows of these uh, sepals. I do need a little bit of a spring green. Every time I grab a green, I'm like, is this going to be a green that disappoints me? <laughs> Oh, you know what? I probably should have grabbed. I probably should have tried to lift out some of that red before I went in there, but it's going fine. It's holding it, holding its own. So maybe, maybe we're not going to have as many problematic greens as I anticipated, which is good. But yeah, if you get a green that's just not working for you, try. Uh, layering another color over it or try laying, layering it over another color and oftentimes that will um, that'll fix your issue. So at this point we've got a good base on everything. Um, we do need some definition but we've got the, the page covered. It's looking a little stiff and awkward in areas but um, you know I think we'll be able to add maybe some more leaves in the background. Maybe kind of soften and fluff it up a little bit. And I am going to grab some color pencils for this. And I wish I had pre-grabbed my colors, but I didn't. So I'll just take them out as, as I need them. Um, all right, so I want to get some detail. 
and some of your detail happens. And I have a, a basic, an oil pastel basics video I just released a few weeks ago um, on my YouTube channel that you can check out if you need some more information. But uh, one of my favorite techniques is to use a color pencil and to go in and refine and add details. And I usually use Prisma colors because they're very soft and they respond really well to the color pencil. Now I'm noticing here it does want to scrape up more than lay down, but that's all right too because we're getting our definition. So uh, that's another reason I wanted to make sure my background paper was something that I that was dark and that I liked because I knew I was probably gonna have to do something like that. Um, let me see if your your lighter colored pencils also tend to be a little softer. It's got more white in them. Um, so let's see if I can go in there. Yeah, I can go in there with this yellow and start to get a little bit of highlight in there. Wipe off the wipe off the tip a bit, and this will kind of scrape and apply. So you're like I can kind of scrape off color and apply the color pencil when I do this, and that that, that is pretty effective, I think. And it's not the most elegant, uh, the most elegant solution sometimes, but I don't like how stiff the um, my stems are, but I guess they are kind of stiff if I look at the photo, but still. I don't love that. And try to redraw a little bit, make this things look a little bit nicer because I'm not, I was too hasty with my earlier sketch and it was not exactly where I wanted it. I was excited to get going. This technique, when you do scrape away, it's called scraffito. You can do it with a palette knife. You can do it with like a, a toothpick. You can do it with like a cut up piece of credit card. That would be my favorite. Or with your colored pencils and add a little bit of color while you're at it. I feel like that should come down around the edge there. All right, also we have some little um, fluff in there. I don't know what that's called, uh, stamens maybe? And then I'll go in, maybe I can go in with a brown pencil, but I probably will go in with, this is kind of like a reddish brown. Tuscan red. Well, that works pretty well, actually. I was going to go in and just kind of dab on a uh, brown pencil, but that works pretty good, too. I'm not going for like super realism here. I'm just um, I'm just looking to sharpen some stuff up. All right, so here I kind of wanted to. There was a turn on the leaf I thought was really pretty. I want to kind of get that back in. A little turn up here as well. Let me go in and put in some of those little details that get smudged out. Sometimes you do change a petal so much that you're better off just uh, kind of going with what your new 
the new petal looks like rather than trying to force it back to what you had. Forcing usually doesn't look that great in art. And now I'm going to go and add some highlights and some shadows and try to refine it a little bit. The layers up very well. Oh yeah, I should have a little curled over leaf back there too. It's really easy to lose your way. I'm going to wipe this off because it did get pretty dirty. I might need to go even go in with a darker red, but we'll see how this one does first. Seems like this one is still quite a bit darker. It's a little easier once you have those those color pencil lines kind of scratched in and then it's like okay I can see where I'm going I can see where I want to have a little more definition I don't mind having the uh, having the, the strokes showing, so it's up to you. If you don't like that, then you don't have to do it. Uh, I think I'm gonna grab some of this light blue and add some of that to the uh, the sepals here. And some onto our leaves, kind of reflecting the blue light that we have in the background. Adding a little bit of movement, making it a little bit more uh, expressive versus realistic. I'm not willing to put the time into this for realism today. I just want to kind of have fun and get used to this product. I think that should be your first step when you do get something new is is to see how it how it works, how it works with your style, not to get too too worried about uh, coming up with a finished product. I mean, obviously, I want it to look good because I'm doing a video about it, but I'm not going to get uh, I'm not going to let myself get too overwhelmed or preoccupied with. With any of that. I'm going to grab a colored pencil. Let's see if I can refine a little bit. I feel like, you know what that should be? I should have another separate stem going down to the center. Not loving the leaves over here. I feel like those are a mess. They are a mess. But often when things are a mess, it just means they're not done yet. And by putting some of these these leaves in with kind of that navy color, it does kind of bring them to the background a little bit and. Uh, repeats those colors we have in the background as well, so I think that's all right. Actually, I don't think there's much wrong with that. I 
And I mean, this is gonna be a quick demo. It's like, what, what are we at? Or like, I don't know, not an hour, not an hour for sure. My tummy's growling. I, I hope you can't hear that. Of course, I just told you that it is, so. A little bit of highlight. I kind of like, I, I think the, um, these lend themselves to an impressionistic, oh, you know what, we'll use this in the background, that would be pretty to add some really dark details. I think it really, um, lends itself to an impressionistic type of, uh, type of look, and I think that's kind of nice, I think it's kind of fun. I don't know if I liked it like that fuchsia color there. I did like it out over here on this flower. But they're from the same plant, so. I think this should be fine. That with a coral, that's really what I should do. Blend it out with a coral and that will it'll just intensify the coral color and it will warm it up a little bit so it looks more natural. Alright, let's take a brown and do a little pointillism here to get those little stamens. was yellow. Oh, I like that. Oh, the Naples yellow makes a really nice highlight for the uh, for the stems. You want the leaves if you need them to be warmed up a little bit. You know, I'm not unhappy with that. I think that was a really good tryout of these pastels. Let's take our tape off and see how it looks. I always feel like we get a better representation of how it looks when it's when we got the tape off. Um, oh, you know what? Do we want to brighten things up a little bit more green? Let me try. I'm just feeling like I could have a little bit more springy green. Yeah, but I think we might be kind of really pushing how much medium that paper is going to take. I think that's probably that's probably pushing it. Um, I feel like the little stamens might be a little bit could be a little bit darker, but let's just see what it looks like once we get the tape off. Cause I think that's that's my, always fun to see. That's the satisfying part. That's what I should make into the YouTube short. I need to be better at filming <laughs> and film them the other way around. Oh well, is there hope for me? Probably not. I wish I, could, I kind of wish I did this on the sand grain paper because that's way cheaper and I think it would have come out just as well. Uh, but I think it's all right. I think it's a good uh, a good tryout of those pastels and um, I recommend them. I think I need to use them in some other stuff to see what they're really capable of. But I think that they are really nice and a great value for a budget pa pastel. They certainly do remind me of Snellier and softness and I think what I'm gonna want to do because I don't like I don't use Snellier on their own I'm gonna put these in with my other pastels in my pastel cabinets and do it do some more art with them and see how they are When worked with harder pastels because I think that's where they're really gonna shine as kind of like the um, The final layers and details I think on their own They're very soft and you have to be careful not to fill your tooth up before you know you get all your layers down but overall um, I like them. I like them. I think they're worth the money if you want a really soft pastel. And uh, yeah, the price is great. I really don't have any, any negatives except for the fact that it says it's using a cadmium yellow pigment and there's no disclosure on the box. And I think that's something that a consumer deserves to know. 
But uh, if you enjoyed this video, this semi um, off the cuff review, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.